Hello and welcome to our new study in the book of Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs is a book of wisdom and I believe we all need wisdom today. So we'll begin this study in just a minute. Join me now with the time of prayer. Father, we just thank you for this day. Thank you for the blessings of life. I pray for each person that's listening today, Lord God, that you would bless them and watch over them. And just pray, Father, that everything that's said and done would bring glory and honor to your holy and precious name. And we lift this up in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Well, as we begin today, I want us to consider a uh, quote from poet T.S. Eliot. He said, where is the wisdom we have lost in knowledge and where is the knowledge we have lost in information? Now, we know we live in an information age, but we certainly aren't living in the age of wisdom. I think we will all agree with that. As we embark on this book of Proverbs, we see that we will learn godly wisdom, how to get it and how to use it. This is about the priorities and principles, not as a get rich scheme or a success formula, but it tells us not how to make a living, but how to be skillful in the lost art of making a life. We're told that King Solomon is the author of Proverbs, and in 1 Kings 3, 5 through 15, we see that God gives Solomon great wisdom, wisdom like no one else, he said, on the face of the earth. And people came from all over the ends of the earth to listen to him, and it says that all returned home amazed. And you know, one of the great things is you and I have the ability to listen to the wisdom of this great man through the study of God's word that we'll be going through. Although we find Solomon spoke, it says some 3,000 Proverbs, the Holy Spirit only selected a few of these to put in this book so that every age should be able to understand and obey. Now, according to 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, it says all scripture is profitable. And it's profitable in four ways. It says for doctrine, and that's about learning what is right, for reproof, that's learning what is not right for correction. That's learning how to get right. And for instruction, that's learning how to stay right. So all four of these purposes are fulfilled in the book of Proverbs. And I'm excited to begin this study with you. And uh, I think it'll be an enjoyable thing. You know, one thing I've always talked to people about, if you read one of the Proverbs each day of the month, you have 31 Proverbs. And so every day you could wake up and read the Proverbs for that particular day. And you could start anywhere. You don't have to start with Proverbs 1. But that would make your day go so much better. And then at the end of the month, you finish. And the beginning of the next month, you start all over again. You will never outgrow the need for wisdom and the wisdom you can acquire by reading the Proverbs. Now, the setting here, as we begin, I believe is at a home. And we find here in a couple of verses where a father and a mother or instructing their son. Now, even though this may be an instruction for a father and a son, the instruction and the, the wisdom that we get can help us in our daily lives and also help us, those of us that have children or grandchildren. It's always we can use the wisdom of Solomon in this. So let's begin at verse one. It said, the Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. Now, this word Proverbs comes from the Hebrew word mashal, and it means to be like or to compare. And we find that Solomon lived somewhere around 950 B.C. that he wrote this, and, and it says that he was the son of David. Now, remember, uh, David, God said, was a man after his own heart. David was not perfect by any means. David probably could have listened to a lot of this wisdom earlier when he made wrong decisions in life. But David was a man who loved his God. God blessed him with his son, Solomon. And then God gave Solomon when he asked him, tell me what you, you need. What do you want? And uh, Solomon says, I just need the ability to govern the people that you have given me. I feel so unworthy of doing this. And God said, because you have not asked for things like the death of your enemies or riches, I'm going to give you the wisdom, unlike anybody who's ever lived or ever will live. But on top of that, I'm going to give you uh, all of the things you did not ask for. So it's an amazing book that we can study and an amazing character that had this. Now, many times we're going to see later on, 
Solomon didn't follow his own wisdom in many cases. And I think that has a lot to say to us about human life. Sometimes we know what to do, but we don't always do it. Verse 2 says, to know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight. Now, this word here, to know, means to comprehend, to understand. And, you know, wisdom is the right use of knowledge. We can have a lot of knowledge, but if we don't use it properly, we're not making wise decisions. And instruction talks about the precepts conveying knowledge. So here's what Solomon is going to give us, the, the wisdom and instruction. And it says to understand, to grasp words of insight. He goes on in verse 3, says to receive instruction in wise dealing. We're going to learn how to handle things properly, how to make decisions in life that are really God-centered decisions, not just doing what we want to do or what we feel is right. And he goes on to say, in righteousness, justice, and equity. These are the things that we will obtain as we grasp this wisdom that God is giving through Solomon. Verse 4 says, to give prudence to the simple. Now, this prudence talks about good judgment. To be able to give good judgment, you have to have wisdom to make a good judgment of things, but to the simple. Now, I think this simple is talking more about an unsophisticated person, a person that does not have the wisdom that many others might have. And he goes on to say he gives knowledge and discretion. Uh, he gives us the ability to make proper decisions and be responsible for the decisions. And he says all of this for or to the youth. Now, not only to the youth, as we talked about before, but I know every day of my life, I need wisdom. I make decisions. I think, I know you do too. We make all kinds of decisions all the time, and I want to make a proper decision. I want God to lead me in the decisions that I'm making. Verse 5 says, let the wise hear and increase in learning, and the one who understands obtain guidance. So here he's saying, even if you have some wisdom, you can gain more wisdom. You can get uh, more in tune to what God's wanting to do. And even the one who understands, we can gain or a better guidance in life. You can never get too much wisdom. You can never read enough or understand enough about what Almighty God is wanting you to do in your life. Verse 6 says, to understand a proverb and a saying, the words of the wise and their riddles. So here we see that God is going to give us an overall understanding. Sometimes we can hear words and they don't seem to make sense. Well, what true wisdom does for us, wisdom from God, it's going to help us come to the understanding of what this really means. And here in verse 7, we find probably the greatest verse in all of Proverbs and one of the greatest verses in all of the Bible, because it says, verse 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. So what is fear? Fear is the affectionate reverence uh, and humbly relying on the Father. You know, it's not actually being afraid of something. It's having a reverence, a, a real deep reverence for God Almighty. And so this is what we learn. If you have that fear, and this is beginning to give us the knowledge or becoming aware of where we are and the decisions we need to make through proper instructions. But then he goes on to talk about the other side. The fools despise wisdom and instruction. Uh, a fool is someone lacking good judgment. Just like it talks about the simple, a person who doesn't have good judgment or is unsophisticated in, in the knowledge and wisdom. The fool lacks that judgment. Verse 8 says, Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and forsake not your mother's teaching. So here again, as I talked at, at the beginning, I believe this is a, an instruction for a, a young person by the father and the mother. I think that's an important thing, too, if you realize this is a joint effort here. The father's giving instruction, and the mother's giving, giving teaching, and the son is to learn from both of them, learn the wisdom. You know, fathers have certain kinds of wisdom, and a mother has certain kind of wisdom, and you put it all together, you get the, the complete package. Verse 9 says, for they are a graceful garland for your head and pendants for your neck. 
Now, I think this graceful garland talks about, uh, in the, the Egyptian area there, talked about pendants that were worn for different things, but this is a pendant of the benefits of wisdom. So as you have these, this wisdom, it's kind of like placing this uh, garland, if you will, on your head to be able to, to know that you're making wise decisions for your life. He goes on to say in verse 10, my son, <clears throat> if sinners entice you, do not consent. Boy, that would be great if everyone listened to that. If someone who is going to do something wrong, and you can, a lot of times we can figure out who these people are pretty easily, but it says if they entice you, if they try to lead you on, do not agree to go with them. Do not get involved in that. And you know, many times with young people, especially, they want to be in the in crowd. They don't, they want to be seen as being somebody like other people. <clears throat> so they, they may do things and go places that they really shouldn't go. And so he's saying to his son here, before that happens, don't let them uh, lead you on. Don't let you let them entice you to do something you shouldn't do. Verse 11 goes on and takes it a little further. It says, if they say, come with us, let us lie in wait of blood. Let us ambush the innocent without reason. In other words, this is not just going down a, a pathway that they shouldn't go. It's taking it a step further than this. It says, join in with us. Let's ambush, and here's what I'm thinking it's talking about here. Let's ambush an unsuspecting person and do it just for fun. Let's beat them up, in other words. Let's wait for blood. And it could even go to uh, more serious than that because it goes on in verse 12. <clears throat> it says, like Sheol, like death, in other words, let us swallow them alive and hold like those who go down to the pit, to those who go down to the grave. And we shall find all the precious goods and we shall fill our house with plunder. In other words, here, I think it's talking about we'll just go in and take what is theirs and make it our own. And a lot of times with all the, the looting and the uh, violence that we see on TV today, that's exactly what's happened. Somebody had to convince these people to go and do those things. And so Solomon is telling his son before it gets to that point, and I think this is why maybe we need to not only uh, instruct our children and grandchildren early, but we need to do it continuously, re remembering all of these things, bringing it up so that they will know uh, what you're talking about and don't just let it uh, go past them. And here's what they go on to say in 14, throw in your lot among us and we will all have one purse. In other words, you come with us and you're going to get a share. Everybody's going to share of what we get. Verse 15 says, my son, do not walk in the way with them. Hold back your foot from their path. In other words, do not follow their ways. Enticing though it may be, if you want to be one of the cool crowd, that may be a, a way to look at it. But where it leads will lead you down a path you don't want to go. Verse 16 says, for their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed blood. Boy, this is a bad crowd here. Not only do they do things every now and then that are wrong, but he says their feet run to evil. This is the main uh, thing that they're concerned about, and they make haste. They're energetic to shed blood. 17 says, for in vain is not a net spread in the sight of any bird. In other words, he's saying it's useless if you are trying to catch a bird, to do it in the open. So you need to do it secretly. And that's what these people are wanting to do because in verse 18 it says, but these men lie in wait for their own blood and set an ambush for their own lives. In other words, what they're, they don't realize they're doing is eventually they are going to be caught and will receive their just reward. It kind of goes back to this old saying that we, we all hear, what goes around comes around, and I think that's what it's, it's talking about. As they lie in wait, as they hide, waiting for someone to ambush, little do they know that eventually it's going to come back and haunt them. You know, people try to do things and, and think they will get away with it, but very rarely does anyone get away with doing evil. Verse 19 says, such are the ways of everyone who is greedy for unjust gain. It takes away the life of it that it possesses. 
So if we have greed, if we want something that does not belong to us, something we did not work for, this leads to, to defeat and ultimately death if we're not very careful. Verse 20 says, wisdom cries aloud in the street, in the markets she raises her voice. In other words, that, that uh, wisdom is crying out louder and louder, and you, my son, need to listen to them. As she raises her voice, hear her. Verse 21 says, at the head of the noisy streets, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gate, she speaks. So not only are we receiving wisdom in one place, but you receive wisdom in many places. I know in, in my own life, I have felt this cry when I've maybe been led to do something I know I shouldn't do. The Holy Spirit will convict you and will make you feel miserable about that. Now, you can decide, I don't care what, what's going on there. I'm going to go ahead and do it. So I think the wisdom sometimes in the life of a believer is the Holy Spirit that gives us that continual uh, idea that we need to follow God and not follow mankind and what they want to do. And it goes on to say in 22, how long, O oh simple ones, O oh misguided ones, will you love being simple? Will you love being without understanding? Will you love being uh, lacking a true wisdom? How long will you scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge. How long will, I think some uh, translations say mockers, how long will mockers take pleasure in doing the evil? He goes on to say in 23, he says, if you turn, if you repent, if you change at my reproof, and that reproof means correction. If you change, if you repent at the correction, behold. And this is, I think, kind of goes to the Lord speaking to us here. I will pour out my spirit to you. I believe that's talking about the Holy Spirit, who is the true author of wisdom. I will pour out my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you. The Holy Spirit gives us the ability to understand and to uh, uh, use the knowledge and the wisdom that we have received. And he goes on to say in 24, because I have called and you refuse to listen, have stretched out my hand, and no one is heeded, because you have ignored all my counsel and would have not have not done my reproof, I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when terror strikes you. Now, I don't think this is, in a sense, looking at God doing this to us, but here's the idea. God is not only going to give us one example, as it says, this wisdom cries out in all of these various places, and he doesn't just give us one instance. I think he continues to talk to us. And as you and I having the Holy Spirit, that spirit continues to let so. Now, Bill, that's not right. You don't need to go there. And I think that's an important thing. He says, because I have called and you have refused to listen, stretched out my hand, and you didn't take it, in other words, you have ignored all my counsel and have none of my correction. And then he says, justice, I believe he's saying, will come to the unjust. You're going to find justice. You're not going to run away from it. Here I've been trying to tell you, been trying to warn you, and you will not listen. Verse 27 says, when terror strikes you like a storm and calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Boy, these are all things that will happen when we do not listen to true wisdom, when we try to go our own way, when we make our own decisions, when we allow greed and pride to take over and guide our thoughts and our actions, these are the things that happen. These are the things, the terror, the calamity, the distress, and the anguish come upon us. 28 says, then they will call upon me. People will call upon God. You know, when you get down in a situation and uh, you, you, you're desperate, People call upon God, but he says, I will not answer. They will seek me diligent, but will not find me. Why? Verse 29, because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. And I believe the Lord continues to give us the opportunity, even if we have been beaten down, even if we have gone astray, if we truly repent, if we truly change, if we truly seek God, he's going to lift up his hand and bring us in. That uh, goes back to that story of the prodigal son. You know, to me, that's exactly what that's talking about. A, a man who decided to leave 
everything, take the money that he thought he was due and live in a way that God would not approve of and his father didn't approve of. And then when he found out everything had been taken away from him, he, he went back home. Well, I think that's what God's willing to do. But there are a lot of people who will never do that. They will never realize that they can turn and come back to God. And he goes on to say in 31, therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way. They will reap their just reward, in other words, and have their fill of their own devices. Verse 32 says, for the simple, for the ignorant, or for the misguided are killed by their turning away and their complacency of fools destroys them. Uh, God is wanting us to hear just like the father and mother want their son to hear and understand before you get to a point of having to make a decision, before you get your back against the wall, before there are things that are, are happening in your life and you don't know where to go or what to do. Think about this. Gain the wisdom that God will give you and make good and wise decisions and not go the way of the simple, of the ignorant, of the misguided, of the prideful, and uh, to do those particular things. And he says uh, the complacency of fools will destroy them. But here's the key, and I think a, an important key is with this last verse we come to. Whoever listens to me will dwell secure, will be at ease without dread of disaster. Isn't that a wonderful thing to think about? Whoever listens to get to me, and I think this is the Lord speaking to you and me, whoever listens to God Almighty will dwell secure, will be at ease without dread of disaster. In other words, I think he's saying God himself will take care of his children and those who heed the wisdom that he gives us. And this, his book, the Holy Bible, is full of wisdom, full of teachings, that we need to understand and take to heart. Not only that, we need to stay close to our God. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to work in our life. And if you get that check in your spirit, I don't know if you've ever had that before, a check in your spirit, listen to that. If something tells you this is not where you ought to go and not what you ought to do, it's something you need to listen to. I know I've said to our people before, I remember one time when I was on a trip with a business trip, we went to uh, New Orleans and going down into the city there and was with a bunch of guys and they were having fun. And, and for a while it was fun, but then they decided to go into a place. And for whatever reason, when I went to the door, when I opened the door, the Holy Spirit told me, you better turn around and leave. And I, it just like a slap in the face. And I did. And they laughed at me for leaving and not going in with them to this, this bar, I believe it was, that they were going in. But here again, God does that to us in so many ways, so many avenues that he's there for us. He wants to keep us away from those things, just like Solomon is warning his son to understand there is a, a right way, there is a wise way to look at things. And you need to rely, rely on the Lord, and he will guide you just like you and I need to rely on Almighty God to give us true wisdom to make good decisions to affect all of our life. Well, I just pray the Lord bless you and watch over you to give you the wisdom that you need and to, to guide your life each and every day. And I just pray that uh, he'll bless you in all ways. And I hope to see you again next week at the same time, Lord willing. Amen.